I'm Johan Bota. I'm an attorney. I live in Mbombela, which is the capital city of the province of Mpumalanga in South Africa. Uh, I've been actively involved in conservation for the past 30 years. Uh, I'm a member of a NGO which specializes in supporting uh, South African national parks and as such I've had the opportunity and the privilege of being actively involved in conservation issues. The primary problem that we are dealing with in conservation today is poaching, uh, subsistence poaching to a very slighter extent but commercial poaching in the larger picture. The focus these days in commercial poaching is a rhino horn and then also uh, elephants uh, for the ivory uh, which has a great demand especially in the Far East. Uh, as a South African the conservation of our natural resources is of great importance to me. It's very dear to my heart and it uh, really saddens me to uh, see how our uh, animals, especially the rare and endangered ones, are being decimated by people who do so simply for the sake of the money. The primary focus of commercial poaching these days is on rhino horn. Um, we've had incursions on a large scale from our neighboring countries and also then from the South African side, especially in the Kruger National Park, which houses the largest population of white rhino in South Africa. The problem faced by the rangers who protect our wild animals are quite um, substantial. The reason being that if a poacher decides to poach a rhino horn, it the poacher has the benefit of deciding when and where the poaching incident will take place. The Kruger Park, uh, for those of you that are uh, familiar with the park, it's uh, a sort of an inverted L-shape, so there's a, a long stretch of country on the uh, eastern border of Mpumalanga and Limpopo provinces, bordering Mozambique. And the distances from the one end to the other isn't large. So any incursion from either border of the Kruger National Park uh, makes a very short traveling time and a traveling distance. So a poacher who decides to do uh, something about uh, collecting rhino horn will decide on a day and a night that suits him and The rangers working in the Kruger National Park um, have a very difficult task. Their primary function is in conservation, but due to the um, absolute high numbers of incursions into the Kruger Park by poachers has forced them to become soldiers in the true sense of the word, because whenever they have an encounter with uh, poachers, there are certain to be shots fired at the rangers by the poachers in their attempt to escape and uh, this often uh, uh, leads to a firefight and uh, regrettably uh, rangers have already lost their lives in the combating of, of poaching. The poachers have the advantage of deciding when and where the incident that they plan will take place. Uh, that places the rangers at a terrible disadvantage because they have to be on alert literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the experience has shown that uh, these incursions uh, have a peak around about full moon when it becomes easier to travel in the park at night in the dark and to find and, and shoot a rhino, remove the horn and then uh, 
just race for the border as quickly as possible to get rid of the um, horn and to um, dispose and hide the weapons that they were, uh, were using in the incident. The um, solution to the problem, if there's a solution, is probably a multifaceted uh, approach to curbing the demand for a rhino horn. Um, according to what I've been taught is that we have a situation where the um, rhino horn is used for many purposes, medicinal as well as ornamental and uh, clearly from the amount of rhino horn that is removed from South Africa at least uh, the demand seems to be insatiable. The solution to the problem I, I don't have any uh, solution or something that comes up uh, easily. The approach would probably be a multi faceted one. Uh, I think probably the uh, uh, education of, of people to understand that besides being ornamental that the uh, rhino horn has, has no medicinal uh, quality whatsoever. So um, I think education wise it would probably be the first approach to, uh, to, to a solution. Of course, for the time being, in order to curb and at least contain the, uh, the removal of, of rhino horn, uh, first of all, the rangers have this very difficult task of maintaining the um, territorial integrity of the park uh, to try and keep rangers, uh, at least uh, poachers, out and uh, if they incur into the park to um, to uh, arrest, apprehend them and, and to bring them before the courts. Uh, there's a very emotional side to the whole thing. Uh, people, and that's the general man in the, in the street, um, clamor for, for heavier and more severe penalties on rhino poaching because it's such an emotional issue. Uh, rhinos are these lovable, beautiful creatures, um, prehistoric if you like and um, people just simply love rhinos. So um, there's also now the contentious issue that um, the sale of rhino horn should be legalized, uh, that is legally harvested uh, rhino horn. And um, although there's an, a lot of emotion involved, if that may just assist in uh, reducing the demand for illegally harvested horn, then um, I'll, I'll be in favor of that. I don't foresee that it will be a total solution. Um, if a rhino horn becomes cheaper because of a larger supply of legally harvested horn, uh, in all probability that could uh, increase the demand because of the traditional values that have been placed on uh, rhino horn in, in uh, the Far East.